Even though the battle was going in the Spartans' favor, Drathius V had a surprise in store. Its moon wasn't a moon at all. It was a forerunner creation designed to build and destroy entire planets. Nobody knew about this until the Covenant cult leader found a way to reactivate the old forerunner tech and start disassembling Drathius V. It was Spartan Davis's job to shut down the device. What's up? This is Naked Eli, the Mostly Unclothed Gamer. Operation Monolith is the third chapter in Halo Spartan Assault. Hope you guys enjoyed the intro cutscene, teaching us that the moon is in fact a forerunner Death Star. And this chapter is going to be all about trying to shut down that Death Star to save Drathius V. So, we're on to mission C1. Let's read the narrative. This mission is titled Descend from the Perch. As Spartan Palmer led the charge on Drathius V, Spartan Davis continued to face considerable enemy threat on the moon. In a stroke of luck, the UNSC Eminent Domain was able to outmaneuver Covenant forces in orbit over the moon and offer some support by deploying Marines to the Southern Mirror Flats. The third Helljumper platoon was the first to land on Drathius V's moon. Their drop zone was less than a mile from Alpha Facility, but the landing scattered them across the razor-sharp rock faces of the mountain range called Glacial Perch. They were quickly surrounded by Covenant infantry and taking heavy losses. Spartan Davis, having held out against a constant stream of ungoing Sankhili for a full day, quickly set out to clear the landing zone for the second wave of drop pods. So here we are on Glacial Perch up in the mountains and evidently there's infinite abyss under us and we have some hell jumpers which are ODSTs, right, orbital drop, sh drop shock troopers, I can say it, I swear, and we're going to be collecting these marines along the way, meanwhile we're taking out enemies with our assault rifle and focus rifle which in my opinion are the two best weapons in this game, right, not including all the uh, super powerful items that you can buy, these are just normal power weapons in the game. So we're going to run out of assault rifle ammo here whip out that focus rifle take down this elite and be sure to collect as much uh, as many plasma grenades as possible and then when you run out of ammo try to transition over to the needler the plasma repeater is another option but i find that the needler is more consistent in taking out enemies especially these elite majors with their focus rifles typically have heavy shields but one dose of needles will completely blow them up and then we have more focus rifle ammo alongside our needler uh, your teammates also carry assault rifles, so sometimes you can pick up their ammo and continue to use the assault rifle. Remember to always use grenades on these guys, and then if you do blow that up, that's going to give you extra points and continue your spree. So there my grenade going completely in the wrong direction, uh, did not want it to go that way, and then we're finally going to blow up uh, some of these grunts. The suicide grunts going to give us the points on blowing up that middle structure. And then here's just a simple chain of kills. You have a ton of grenades, so feel free to use as many or as few as you want. Just try to keep up that killing air, and this mission is going to be over pretty soon to give us the full points. And uh, if you did everything properly, should be a pretty easy gold star. That's mission C1. Uh, nothing too bad here, a very straightforward ground mission, picking up a few marines and killing a bunch of elites, grunts, and jackals. So the score is going to tally up with the kill points, the metal points from our sprees and all that, and then a really fat time bonus if you can end the mission quickly. So that's what we try to do to get those extra points and get that gold star. Let's move on to mission C2, Spirit Graveyard Standoff. Having secured a safe landing zone at the Glacial Perch, Davis moved to regroup with a second platoon of marines, whose pods were coming down among dozens of crashed spirits. These spirits were destroyed from orbit by eminent domain, just as the ship itself was destroyed. Davis and the marines found Covenant infantry swarming from the wrecked spirits, angry and looking for payback. So what that sounds like is that the Eminent Domain was a big UNSC ship that got blown up but took out a lot of ships with it. So we're seeing that wreckage right here on the battlefield. We're going to start out with a few drones. Uh, you're going to see some of these challenges being completed. These are all just grinding challenges. Each mission has three specific challenges. I really wish that they would tell you what the challenge was for in game or that you could like click on it to see what it is. I, I didn't see a feature like that myself and it would be really useful for knowing what I accomplished. Like challenge completed. Okay, but you know, what's the challenge? I don't really know. So to learn you have to go back into the settings screen and then you can look at your achievements and the medals that you've earned in the game and uh, a list of the challenges that you need to complete. There's also weekly challenges that you can do for extra points. 
And so, uh, I mean, if you're low on XP and you need it to buy, I mean, the store isn't really varied. They have a sniper rifle and like an auto sentry, and I think a small score booster or a shield booster. And they're not expensive at all. If you're just playing the game normally, you should have enough XP to buy whatever you want. So, in this mission, anyways, uh, if you follow the guide, we're going to have very specific um, ammo pickups for the assault rifle littered around the map. I think in this walkthrough, I didn't show you the assault rifle all the way to the right. You can see it in the top right corner of the screen right there. A uh, little shiny black gun on the ground. Uh, you can still see it right there again. And so if you're missing some AR ammo or you want some more, you can pick that up. I'm going to have full focus rifle. Come over here, kill the focus rifle guy, pick up some more ammo to make sure that I have full ammo on that gun. And then as you saw earlier, there was a focus rifle pickup on the ground. Just in my opinion, uh, like I said last mission, these are the two best items in the game. If you can continue to use them, use them as much as possible. Right there, my grenade I think was blocked by one of these drop pods. So there actually are things that can stop your grenades from going over, uh, such as really tall rock structures, a tall spirit, or if you're just standing too close to a drop pod, just like that. So here I'm just using my radar and trying to continue my spree. Uh, missing it in a couple places, uh, you know, as is, happens on some of the missions. Sometimes you can't control where the enemies are, but what you can do is try to position yourself in the center of them. As long as you're able to handle the fire, you should be able to kill them all relatively quickly. Like, in this game, you have near infinite shields. In normal Halo, right, your shields will go down in, in half a second from a focus rifle, or in three shots from a plasma repeater, or in, in you know, two, two to three shots from a plasma pistol from these grunts. In Spartan Assault, you could sit there all day taking fire, shooting a million enemies right in your face, right, and it's not until many seconds later that your shield from combined fire is taken down. And they, you know, they just adapted that for the top-down shooter aspect, and I guess for people new to this type of, of gameplay style. Uh, it's not extremely difficult to stay alive. The hard part is just getting the points to get those gold stars. All right, so moving on to mission C3, Assault on the Supply Lines. South of the Forerunner structure, a collection of thousands of spiked rock formations known as the Basalt Maze protruded from the moon's thick ice. Covenant supply lines were running straight through the maze to set up more defenses around the Forerunner structure. Spartan Davis connected with UNSC combat technicians who believed they could render the Forerunner structure inert. They just needed the chance to get inside the structure. Getting the combat engineers close to the Forerunner structure would be extremely difficult, so Davis created a diversion to provide them with the best chance. The Basalt Maze provided an ideal location for his plan. So here we're continuing to be Spartan Davis on the moon, and we have to blow up six wraiths that are coming down here. There's, I believe, an infinite uh, supply line of race, and after you kill six of them, uh, that ends the mission, and you have to go down to the Hornet uh, to tally up your final score. Now, when I first started playing this, I was like, how the heck am I going to get a gold star? It's like, what, 120,000 points? I don't know, we'll see at the end. But it's, it's a pretty high number if you were just going to go straight out and use grenades, your weapons, and um, some of those uh, machine guns on the side to blow up the race. So instead, we don't want to blow up six race. We actually are going to wait for the infinite supply of Covenant to come out of the wall in the top right northern structure. And we're just going to let the race pass on by. Also, don't blow up the... So there's anti-air race, and then there's normal race. And for some reason, the anti-air race are weaker and only take two grenades to blow up. Whereas these normal race, you can see right here, it's a, it's a darker purple without the huge guns on the back. Uh, those are actually much stronger, so don't waste your grenades or your time fighting those. Now this is where we're going to position ourselves uh, on the top right there just to blow up some of those enemies. And then we're going to come down here after we have passed, maybe it was 150,000 was the points that we needed. Uh, and then we can drop on down and end the mission. So you have a, a certain amount of time to make it to the end. You can actually get up to, I think, 600,000 points just by camping on the top right and spawn killing all of the enemies that come out. 
So this mission, extremely easy to get a gold star if you know how to, uh, uh, you could say, abuse that system, how to actually strategize around it. Uh, but if you're just going to go out and kill the wraiths really fast like I was doing for the longest time, you're not going to get a ton of points, right? You saw earlier, I could only get like 97,000. I was like, what's going on? And then I realized like, wait, these guys are just going to keep pouring out so I can just, you know, spawn kill up top, get a ton of points, boom, easy gold star. All right, mission C4, infiltration of the Covenant perimeter. Covenant forces established a mile wide defensive perimeter around the Forerunner structure. To protect the technicians, UNSC command had deployed snipers among the Marines reinforcements. They would provide suppressing fire from the higher ground around the structure. However, the area they were deploying to was swarming with stealth Sankhili. Spartan Davis escorted several sniper teams to their locations and cleared the area of any distractions in the process. Without his support, the sniper squads wouldn't have had a chance to make it safely to their assignments. So Spartan Davis leading the charge, he's got three snipers and we need to post them up at three perch locations for the final mission. Oh, that's my phone, sorry about that. Uh, for the final mission where they're actually going to be uh, it's assisting us in taking out the drones and all the enemies piling in on us uh, just to take out the engineers. So you'll see what happens in the next mission, obviously. It'll make a lot more sense. So in this mission, we got a ton of stealth elites. We got some uh, elite majors with their focus rifles. You're going to want to try and prioritize them because they, um, like you know how other enemies can shoot you and you can dodge their fire? you absolutely cannot dodge the focus rifle. So if the focus rifle is gonna go off on you, then, and you're low shield, you could actually die from that. So always try to prioritize them in fights if you can. Uh, and then right here, we got that jackal like humping the rock right there, not sure what he was doing, trying to teabag it because he knew he was going down, who knows. And then uh, we're gonna pick up that kill tack and move on forward. Got several stealth elites coming up in this next section. You can actually see them before they sneak up on you. Or maybe it's not this section, maybe it's coming up, uh, picking up some ammo. And uh, I think that's focus rifle, that, yeah, that's a focus rifle crate on the bottom right there. So that's huge for getting full ammo. Right here you could say I'm even wasting some of my needler because I could just use the, uh, the focus rifle. But we got plenty of ammo on this mission as long as you pick them up along the way and don't, you know, completely waste the ammo moving forward. So it's really hard to aim the focus rifle at the stealth elites. I really prefer to use the needler for two reasons. One is it tends to lock onto them really nicely. Right here he's getting away from it a little bit, but especially if they're charging at you, the needler seems to slow them down a little bit and just blow up in their face. It only takes two uh, combined blows to take out a stealth elite with the needler. Whereas with the focus rifle, it, it seems like they're pretty resistant to it. So I try not to use the focus rifle on them unless I really have to. Right here, some of the grunts getting in the way of my little guy. Nope, you're gonna go down. And uh, just use your grenades on the turrets there. We have another turret over here. Trying to take out the stealth elite before he sneaks up on me and kills you. I think it's in uh, three hits from full health, the uh, stealth elite will kill you with his sword. So you wanna also prioritize them in fights. I would say after the focus rifle elites, unless they're clearly right up on you. So here are the kneeler, gonna show you how this cleans these guys up really, really easily. I never understood why elites would just rage when their shield goes down. You'd think that they would like wanna go and take cover instead of just yelling at the top of their lungs, ah, he killed my shield. Oh, and then, you know, headshot, and that's a dead elite. Silly, silly elites. So that's the end of mission C4. And we're going to continue to move on with the final mission, which is actually incredibly difficult. So, here we barely got the gold star. Missed a few chain combos, but you saw where those were in the mission, and you should be able to use the guide to get that gold star relatively easily. Now, this mission is incredibly difficult just to survive, but also to get the gold star. You need to be nearly perfect. So here I'm going to take out the, uh, the Brute Chieftain with SMGs, tends to work pretty well on him. And we're going to start off with the SMG shotgun combo. So we have our engineer, a technician in the middle, working uh, to deactivate the foreigner structure so that it doesn't act like the Death Star and blow up Drathius V. And so we really have to protect this engineer, because if we don't protect the engineer, then we lose the mission and everybody dies. And that would be a terrible thing. So. 
Right here, there's a bunch of drones. Try and chain all of them. If you're having trouble killing them around structures, you can whip out the shotgun and poke around and just try to be really accurate with your shots. Right? The shotgun is very high risk, high reward. If you miss the shot, you do no damage. But if you get the shot, then you get, you know, you basically kill them in one hit. So here we're going to use the shotgun on the left side to spawn kill the elite and some of his grunt buddies coming out. There you can see where the shotgun did choke, and even though I was directly next to him, uh, it simply didn't hit. So you want to pull back, you don't want to be directly in their face with the shotgun. Now we have these two turrets which I'm looking to blow up, but I remember that the drones are going to start coming out. So I move over to the right, and we're going to take out these drones again really fast, try to combo that with the grunts coming out on the left side, and then continue to kill the drones to get those combos, A, so that we don't let the engineer die since the drones do a lot of damage to him and B uh, we need to continuously move left and right with these combos or else we might clean up everyone on one side and then the engineer will be dead or you know we'll kill all the the drones and then some of your marines will have killed the grunts on the left so you want to kind of portion your time back and forth between those two during that assault now we're going to move in, swap out the shotgun because we're going to start to see a number of elites. And I like here, I like this combo a lot, using the SMG to kill the grunts, swap out, use the focus rifle to kill the elite. Got some more grunts, use the SMG, elite comes out, swap out, use the focus rifle. So this is, in my opinion, by far the most efficient way to deal with this and to make sure that you continue that killing error. Because if you don't combo every single one of these guys, you're not going to get the gold star. It's that difficult. So we're going to continue here to use up as much ammo as possible. The grunt uh, seems like he was hiding in the corner over there, missed that combo. Uh, but I continued my killing air strain over here. Got pretty lucky. The sniper right there taking out the uh, elite major. So those are the elites from, or the, sorry, the snipers from mission C4 that we set up, doing some sniper work and assisting us in this fight. Now right here I dropped the combo, which is really unfortunate because you, you really need those points. Like this whole time you need to be getting that killing air and just getting a full on combo. The focus rifle clearly rips through the elites and then I find that the needler is really good for taking out the brute chieftain. So the elite, I mean needlers in this game are just really beast mode. It's like super super powerful, locks on really nicely, uh, even at close range it's very accurate. So all in all, I save the needlers for the end of this mission uh, because I like the, like I said earlier, the combo that we have with the SMGs and the focus rifles. And then at the end here, it's the best way to protect the engineer against this huge onslaught from double brute chieftains, uh, double elite majors, a ton of elite miners. And then right there, I ran way too fast to that guy. Uh, but so I'm going to continue to use up the rest of my ammo here looking at the the timer on the top seeing that we're running low on time So just going to try and kill as many things as possible before that timer runs out and then uh, it's going to be the end of the mission So just you can throw grenades and you'll actually get points after the mission's already over and you can't you can't move anymore So always try to throw a grenade in that last second because those points might make the difference between a gold star and not, especially on this mission. It's going to be really, really close. Look at that. Only 2,200, yeah, 2,750 point difference. So, hope you can get the gold stars with this guide. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Next up, we have Spartan Assault Chapter D, where you can see the Grizzly Tank Beast Mode going ham. And then we have the third and final assault code on the right. Uh, if you have Spartan Assault, you want to get a new emblem in Halo 4 with some concept art and a huge amount of XP. So that's it. This is Naked Eli. Subscribe for more, and thanks so much for watching.